Now, how do they determine blood alcohol from a breath sample? I want to show you here back. Back in the 1920s, a guy over in Sweden figured out that if you could take a measurement of someone's breath, ethanol in someone's breath coming from their lungs, you could figure out what was in their blood. And what he said was, it's a, it's a long formula, but part of the formula is he says that for every 2,100 ethanol molecules that you find in a person's blood, you will have one that ends up in the lung. It actually passes through the partition into the lung wall from the blood into the lung at a ratio of 1 to 2100. And he calls that a partition ratio. Now, scientists in the 70s, 80s, 90s did, have done more studies and what they found out is that people's partition ratios vary. They can be as low as 1555 all the way up to 3,005. So we don't know what your partition ratio is. We just don't know. Now the state, the state's experts, they lie, outright lie, to the judges and the prosecutors in the Commonwealth of Virginia. What they say is that everybody's getting the benefit of the doubt on a breath test. They say that if you took your blood, the number on the blood certificate would be higher than what's on your breath certificate, and that's a lie. But the reason why they say that is the average person's partition ratio is almost 2,300 to 1. The thing is, is that 15 to 20 percent of the population are below 2,100 to 1, so they're actually getting screwed on a breath test. I had the state's expert in a trial my client had a 0.11, and I cross-examined her, and I asked her, if my guy was down here, if his partition ratio was down here, and we don't know where it was, but I asked her to figure out what his blood alcohol content would be on the certificate if he was down here. She didn't want to answer the question. She finally did, and her answer was a 0 0.077 for my point. One, one. If you come into my office, uh, I'll show you the transcript and I'll show you that number. So we don't know.